We've done 145 bands. We've always picked a song. We've we've had <laughs> many that we hated. This is the first episode in the first band where we don't have a single song that we like. Welcome to Every Album Ever with Mike and Alex. My name is Michael and Sue, and I'm joined, as always, by my Fun of the Sun, Love and Summer co-host, Alexander Volt. Say hello. Hello. This is Every Album Ever, the podcast where we listen to every single album in the world, one artist at a time. That's a whole discography per episode. And today, we'll be discussing every album by... The Virgins. The Virgins, a band that we would never, ever, 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 ever cover on this show if it were up to us, <laughs> which means this is a Patreon request. If I could quote Chris Jericho. <laughs> oh, no, sorry. <laughs> ever. Sorry. I should have tried. You should have ended it there with that weird sound. I mean, way better of a quote. I was trying to do, he does like this never, ever thing, and I just, oh, I couldn't, I couldn't do it. I think the mystery is far more entertaining than even knowing the reference. Yeah, people this, can use Google. This is, this is requested on Patreon by Horacio. Horacio, if y'all remember from way back when, requested our Spice Girls episode. So clearly this guy is a very, uh, he what? likes us. You know what? He likes pop music and he keeps it around to two or three albums, which I can appreciate. He's at, first of all, he's giving us a ton of money. So thank yes. you for always supporting us. Yes. But also... He's really fucking good at like, ah, you guys listen to a lot of albums here. Here's a, here's a quick one. Here's a quick one. Very good at that. Yes. But the, the contents of those short ones is usually something enraging. And, and I'm going to say something out the gate. Sure. First of all, if you're a fan of the virgins, you probably shouldn't watch this episode. I'm going to go ahead and assume, but I would 10 times out of 10, listen to Spice Girls over the virgins. Oh, same. Okay. I'm glad we're on the same page. Same. That. That's uh, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how many times I have to say it because we got a lot of a lot of heat for that Spice Girls episode. Their first album, I would listen to like over so many albums. It's great. It's a great pop album. Dude. So many great. albums. That so that first <laughs> Spice Girl albums, it's a banger. And and this band is well, I don't like what they do. But I, even if I didn't like what they do, I can always be turned. I can always be turned, and I was not turned. <laughs> I don't like what they do. I don't like what they stand for. I don't like virginity. What, what do you mean? I uh, just like it's very shallow and vain. Um, it seems like yeah, I'm looking at a photo of the guys right now. They look like people I probably wouldn't want to hang out with or no, get along I, with. I wouldn't want to either. They're all I, standing exactly the same too. Yeah, and then like I stumbled across a quote about them breaking up and i was like oh go fuck yourself go fuck yourself wait why um so getting ahead of things this is a very short-lived band indeed and uh it's basically one man donald cumming yep yep and regarding breaking up the band he said i was a young guy and i wanted to be in a band and it was great but I don't feel that way anymore. I'm an adult now, and I think there's something really unsettling about a grown man walking around pretending to be a teenager. So well, I agree with that, but being in a band doesn't mean you're trying to be a teenager unless you're fucking a moron. <laughs> uh, yes, that's part one. And then part two is like, fuck, like, fuck you. You had everything handed to you on a silver platter. These guys did not work hard not once not once they had Do you have citations alex um so according to a, a a record label where or i for, i forget the site sorry i should have wrote that down but if you google the virgins there's a record label that like talks about their 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 upbringings and such should we plug Cult or atlantic or uh oh you mean uh our history should, boy no, should we do plugs just oh, in general? Oh, shit! I forgot! <laughs> I, sorry, I, I came We in. jumped right into yeah. the band, which is what we, we never do. Uh, if you're still here and you know we hate the band, maybe you want to hang out with us and while we talk about other bands that we probably enjoy a lot more, uh, you know, subscribe if you want to help us out. Talk shit in the comments, leave your picks for best and worst if you're familiar with the band, or if you hate the band, which would be nice and fun. Uh, yeah, and uh, you can find a Spotify playlist on the Virgins in the description. Uh, I mean, they're usually... Very, they're very short. I uh, I don't know... You know what? Because we, we don't make these playlists until after we do the episode. Yeah. I don't know what to do. 
I don't I don't like any of the I music. Think I threw like six songs on there. I don't think I have those. I don't think I have six songs in me. Okay. <laughs> so the website I'm pulling from is Hold on, let me finish plugs. Okay, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> sorry. I, we're all over the yeah. place. Uh you could do that if you want. And, and uh, uh and if you feel so inclined, patreon.com slash every all matter. If you want to suggest an artist for us, just like Horacio did this time. Uh and it goes to show that we fucking do it regardless of of our feelings. It, it it would be a less well-rounded and thorough show if we just covered bands that we wanted to, to do, which is well, I, I I don't uh, it. But being being pushed out of our comfort zone is a gift and a curse. I'm just yes, going to say that because I have found so many bands that I would never have found otherwise, and I'm excited about, especially with these requests. Some of these requests are fucking incredible. And then there's other times where I'm just. Oh boy! Okay, okay. They can't all be winners. <laughs> the the nature of this podcast, they can't all be winners. We could pick nothing but winners, but I think that would be less overall less interesting for us and less interesting for you guys. And this is not a knock on a roster or, or your taste or anything. Uh, maybe it may seem that way, but he, he knows us by now. We you want us to fucking lie to you? We're not going to fucking lie he to you. He's very self deprecating. He can you you paid for our goddamn honest opinions. He knew what he was getting <laughs> exactly. If, to give anything less would be a goddamn uh, disservice to to all of you fine folks. But anyway, back to your uh, never, ragging, ragging ne- on this band. Never worked a hard day in their life. Yes. Um, so, and where I got this information from, cultrecords.com. Um, yeah, that's the one owned by the Strokes, right? Not the Strokes, but what's his face? Oh, Ju- Julian. Yes, Julian. Is, sh- I, I said Casablanca is like the movie. Is that really his name? I think it is. <laughs> yeah, it is. Oh, wow. I um, heard it. So this is where I'm pulling it from. Um, so c- should I call him Cumming or Donald? Either way. Cumming is a funnier word? It is funny. Cumming, he was a model for this photographer, Ryan. Oh, that's right. McGinley. I, I got you. I got you right here. Uh, I'm going to find it in about three seconds. Uh, of course. Wait. And this is... Right, a- yeah, Ryan McGinley. He's like apparently a fucking famous ass photographer. Yes, he's had his photos displayed at the Whitney Museum of American Art. Man, I know so little about all that. I don't even know the fucking museum you just named. I know it's a big one. I don't know much. Take your word for it. Yes. Um, so he's a model. He met the guitar player, Wade Oates, at a photo shoot. Wade Mexico. Oates. What a fake name. It is. I mean, these guys just scream fake start to finish. Um, so he met him in Mexico, and then they kind of formed the band around there. They f- recorded an EP in 07. And they had played a total of two shows. Count them, two shows. Their third show, they got to play fucking Paris, France, ah, Paris Fashion Week with fucking Patti Smith and Sonic Youth. Yeah. And I'm just like, and then Atlantic Records send them. Like, yeah. Everything, everything handed to them. This band stinks, dude. Yeah. Everything (laughs) handed to them on a silver platter. And this guy's going to be like, oh, being in a band is fucking... It's a phase, baby. You can't be a teenager forever. Here's the thing. I forgive all that shit. I don't give a fuck about your journey. If I like your music, I don't give a (laughs) fuck. But I hate the music. So that just seems more obnoxious to me. Yes. They they, they just coasted at a thing that clearly he was not meant to do. He's clearly not very good at it. He's not like a good songwriter. Didn't really seem to... They just seemed like, oh, I'm around sexy people and famous people and um let me be in a band sure i'll do that i guess so uh before we go too further we got we got a whole bunch of stuff well as much as you could possibly drum up uh from our history guy tom osman please follow him on all uh facebook instagram and twitter at tom osman sounds uh, as well as his substack at tomosman.substack.com and don't forget to check out his debut album so much for all day's work which you can find on bandcamp apple spotify as well as the description he does all our history stuff he compiled a few interviews and his comments on this band really tickled me <laughs> tom's comments because he said this is from tom he says this music makes me tap my feet and bob my head while at the same time kind of hating it uh it says sounds like a personal problem it's not a personal problem dude this band sucks uh he says i would also like to say that for the record i did research three interviews and i have to say the content i squeezed out of them was pretty feeble i don't know if it's the interviewers or donald coming but try harder boys (laughs) it's it's bone dry yeah there's nothing about these guys they fucking didn't care at all 
I mean, it's the cliche like model thing, right? Yeah. You, you look good and you have no, you have no substance. No substance. And I uh, mean, if you're a fan of this band, you're still here. You're a masochist because we're not going to, it's not going to get any better. Or it's not going to get any better. So, uh, there's the only real see. member of the band is Donald Cumming who, who just sang shocker. He's not a musician. And, uh, then you got Wade Oates, who was there for, I guess, the, the beginning, but... Well, there's like album one, album two. Exactly. Yeah. And each album is a different band, essentially. Uh, so it doesn't, I don't know, it doesn't matter who the other guys are, but you got, you know, Nick Zarin Ackerman, Eric uh, Radensberger, Zan Aird, Aird Max Kamins, Kamen, sorry, and John Earthly, Etherly. Man, I can't read. These fuck his names. <laughs> I'm going to take all my anger out on all these things that don't matter. But... Uh, so okay so, so anybody who doesn't know anything about this band imagine a worse franz ferdinand a, a worse the strokes a worse strokes this uh, during that era of kind of dancey garage band dancey funky white guy asshole indie and yes, <laughs> from specifically from new york too like uh this is yeah this is really like a budget version of the strokes man like i'm not a big strokes guy but like i've said in the past you're not going to deny that first album and like, i get the merit and i see why people like them but this is like there's nothing there's it's also like this is and it's going to sound super shallow of me but i guess it fits the fucking episode it's like shit you you'd see like a like a valley girl bumping in her white convertible in la oh, it's, like, so it's, it's it's like it's, it's soup it's it's fast food music. It's dog, it's dog shit. Like I, like the first time I heard, it, I was like, oh, I get, I get it. It's fun. It's poppy. I'm tapping my feet. And it makes me feel. It, it's lively. And then like three songs later, I'm like, oh, this, this is. I don't think I like this. And then going back to it to 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 take my notes, I was just in hell. I was yeah. in fucking hell. Uh, this is one of the one of the worst bands we've covered in a long fucking time. Sorry, Russ. I I can't even <laughs> say I was. I really don't like this band, but also it was over so quick. That, Very, uh, it was easy. And even then, like, it still dragged for me. But <laughs> it's not like it's, uh, I mean, I, I, there are, there's definitely one album I prefer more than the other, even though I think they're both bad. But both of them. Are we are, doing that here? Uh, no, not, not for two <laughs> albums. I think th three albums is the cutoff it's for cut best off? Okay. Yeah. Uh, But both albums, first of all, they sound completely different from each other, mm -hmm. but each one is completely ripping off something specific. Yes. And it's insane. Yes. It's insane. Oh my god. Yeah, the the first one is like the strokes and all that. The second one is like a Springsteen Lou Reed solo thing. I have a different name to throw into that pool and we'll okay. get to it when we get to it. Uh so some stuff so, by the way, I didn't that mention it at first. Check out my IP by the way. <laughs> I keep forgetting to plug stuff. I have an EP, and I think it's better than this. Hi, hey, you decide. All right, baby, you decide. Link in the description. Panda Monkey. Okay, anyway. Uh, so this is this is uh, one of the interviews with, with, with Coming. I, I'm not going to get used to saying that name. And it, it, it's a testament to not only what Tom said about there being nothing on this band and not, them not giving any kind of information, mm -hmm. but also to the fucking lack of actual music experience and love there's no music love here because this is the question is is like what is the first music that had a big impact impact on him mm -hmm. and this is what Cummings said i remember listening to the records my mother used to play when i was a kid she played springsteen and linda ronstadt i was always aware of it and listening to the lyrics i would misinterpret or put the words together in nonsense ways but music was always playing and i was always singing songs the different songs you sing in school with the whole class i was always really engaged with music End that quote. is what the fuck was that that is a <laughs> robot <laughs> That is an AI generated answer for why do you like music? Dude, you ever been asked a question that you have no business talking about and you, you fucking every book I was I've ever done? Always singing songs, the different songs you sing in school with the so like <laughs> fucking like Cotton Eye Joe and oh, like shit, these dude. like patriotic songs. Dude, conjunction that make you, Junction, man. Dude, yeah, fucking square dancing. Jesus Christ. I, I don't like. Yeah, he's not. a. He's clearly not a musician. Obviously, obviously, you could hear it in the music. You could hear it in the, anything he says. <laughs> so uh, and, and this is 
this is more about it. like it's not like is it, we're going to talk about it as much as we can, but there's not much. Uh, another, uh, I guess, rumors that he like lived on the streets for a, lo- a long time. I don't believe that for one goddamn. Second. Nor should you, because this is his quote. He says, "I left home when I was almost 16. I lived many places. To say I lived on the streets is a bit much, because my friends took me in right away." And I've been bouncing around ever since. We all have nights where we've come up short on a place to stay. It still happens to me sometimes, but now I get a hotel room. And then <laughs> Tom quote, uh, Tom adds a uh, MF coming right here. You know, MF doom, MF, MF coming. coming, you know, yeah, clearly cut from the same cloth. Same you know? cloth. Hey, hey, two, se- hey, two, two peas in a pod. Just two guys. Two sides of the same coin. Two guys in New York coming up rough. Yeah. And, and, and last quote, because... The name The Virgins is not Simon is whatever. It's not creative. And then on top of that, you have Virgin Records. It's It's not the greatest name, whatever. But uh, I don't really judge names too harshly because a lot of bands I love have bad names, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. But uh, they asked him about it and and Cummings said, doesn't it sound like fun? We want our name to reflect our musical ambitions. Keep it sexy and not too pretentious. Or you could say young and dumb. Uh, What? Like... The, listen, I don't pick apart quotes when we whatever we do. I never pick apart quotes, uh, but this motherfucker is not trying. <laughs> no, no, not one bit. He's, again, he's never had to. This guy's never been told no. He's uh, never. He's never had to. Yeah. He's this young, yep. dumb, and full of cum. Full of coming. Oh, Jesus Christ. Yeah. yeah, whatever. We've shot on this fucking guy enough, and we're going to do it some more. So if we're ready to get into the albums, uh, they have two. Uh, very brief. Very brief. Uh, first one came out 2008. Last one, 2013. And I guess we might as well get into it. I'm ready. Here we go, everybody. This is 2008's self-titled. Service, Don't let a good night's fun at first come to an early end. I th- go ahead. I thought maybe this was like a bloodhound gang type thing. I thought it was gonna be goofy. You thought it was gonna be fun. Funny. I did. Yeah. I wasn't turned off by the song at all. I actually kind of like the song. Then I realized this band's not that smart. No. Or catchy, even, nope. really. This is not even a good song. It's just a decent opener. Yeah. yeah. So you've heard stuff like this. And I imagine everyone listening has heard stuff like this. Uh, funky, funky white guy indie. And there's nothing I hate more than funky white guy indie. <laughs> There are, there are guys who do it good, though, but this uh, coming in is not one of them. It, do, it's, it does kind of take you back, though. It does transport you back to 2008, doesn't it? It does, but uh, to compare them to uh, an obscure band, like the, the backing band for Wheeler Walker Jr., I think they changed their name recently. They used to be called Republican Hair. Oh. And they had a song called Miss Prince. And they do, like, the funny, like, white guy funk really good. Interesting. But yeah, I'm assuming Miss Prince is a is a uh, pun of sorts. It is a pun because it sounds like you're talking about calling her like oh mm. like Miss Prince or whatever. But then it's about going through a breakup and how you miss her, but you don't miss her like you miss Prince. <laughs> I thought you, I thought it, you know what I thought this whole time that I was like a like a misprint like a newspaper oh like multiple misprints oh you 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 went the the animaniacs route <laughs> I did where they said dust for Prince and then Dot comes back holding the singer Prince that's fucking I love that that show the, I'm not talking about the reboot I haven't uh-huh. seen the reboot but the original was so fucking re- crazy smart it was uh, not aimed at it's children. like yeah this is for children you guys didn't have to do this it, it's so and the the fucking because they had all the the licensing for Warner Bros they they were able to, to so many great so, things so many great things by the way this album blows <laughs> <laughs> it's, I have to tell you man this fucking is, oh my god it's bad it's for. <laughs> Gettable. Um, it's just a genre album. There is nothing unique or individual about anything on here. Speaking of white guys who kind of play funky music, for some reason, I like during this mundane journey, I was like, man, 
I wish we were talking about Smash Mouth instead, because Smash Mouth. Okay. You can hate that music. <laughs> sure. But you can't say it's boring. Uh. No, <laughs> I suppose you can't. No, never thought no. about it that way. So for some reason, I was just like, I wish I was listening to Smash Mouth. I don't Dude. know why I thought that, but I did. Listen, we don't choose our thoughts. That's why there's no free will. <laughs> okay, but that's also why <laughs> why we're not. We're, it's it's okay to, to feel that way. Because, I mean, honestly, how many albums is Smash Mouth guy? <laughs> oh, they probably have too many. Ah, way, damn, maybe I. You had a shot, Smash Mouth. All right, we we, we were considering it. Fucking okay. What is there to say about this whole album that can't also be said about one song? Because it's all the same fucking Cause, thing. Cause, well, I will say between like She's Expensive and Rich Girls, I give the slight edge to She's Expensive. Yes, but they're so both I. they're both songs that just like oh, these were these were designed to be singles. Yes, 100 percent Yeah. Rich Girls especially is is more egregious to me because it's it's just a cut and dry example of the genre it's very nice it's Mm -hmm. super inoffensive it has the fucking catchy title and chorus it's like how transparent can you be that you're not an artist (laughs) like i mean fuck dude just fucking listen to helen oates rich girl way better song or just helen oates uh, period period any helen oates song there's a so most of the songs kind of fit that template of like it's inoffensive and nice you could put it on the background at a fucking douchey party while you're driving down the fucking sunset or something. I get the, you know, that whole aura of it or something. But there's a few songs where I'm mad. And that oh, is you, you, Teen like, Lovers. Below. Dude, yeah. Below. Yeah. Dude, it's so bad. And then, then fucking one of the most offensive, offensive Michael Jackson ripoffs with murder. Like... Let's, yeah. just, let's make a Michael Jackson song now, except it's going to suck. Yeah. <laughs> ah! Yeah. Well, we already got like the disco stuff. Let's try to be like Mike. And then, uh, but yeah, even, even in the terms of like Michael Jackson ripoffs, it's like, again, you need to go listen to like Bruno Mars or something. Yeah, at least he's got like multi genre type of shit in his in his sound. I don't like him, but like I appreciate that there's more there. Yeah. Um, um Fernando Pando Oh boy. I hesitate to call it a good song, but it it's if I had to like Go ahead. Which I did have to compile. <laughs> yeah. The good songs from this album, I would say that's one of them. One of them. It's the it's the it brings in acoustic guitar. It's the first ballady type thing ever for this band. Uh, it is insanely appropriate over the era. Yes, <laughs> it's not unique in any way. Sure, it's nice, but it's also pissing me off. It's also pissing me off. And, and by the end of it, I, I was pretty, I was pretty livid. I fucking hate that song. Yeah, yeah for sure. Yeah. Like, uh, it, dude, it's like let's let's make something a little bit more emotional at this time. All right, what a, Fernando Pando. What about those uh the the farty guitar noises on uh Radio Christine? Uh I didn't even it didn't even stick out to me. It felt more of the same. The only thing that stuck out to me about that song, I actually did kind of like a couple of the vocal lines in the verse. Mm-hmm. And that's, but that's pretty much it. I mean, it was I literally just like two vocal lines. I don't know what the guitar tone is called, but uh, it's kind of like all like <laughs> It's like, like boiling water. Yeah, it sounds like, like boiling water. <laughs> I probably didn't even do it good. It sounds like farts. I don't know what you're talking about. It sounds like I'm like O and O for weird sounds. On Definitely. This episode. Yeah. Um, or one and one. Or sorry, O or, or O two and two. two. Yeah, yeah. Um, Man, we. I'm, you have no excuse. You like sports. I, I was just like wet. Yeah, yeah. It's O and two. Um, yeah. But yeah, I mean, and then it's over. And then it's over. It's 35 minutes, and it's. A very long 35 minutes to me. <laughs> and, and, like, it sounds like we're, we're, we're just shitting on it and not talk, talking about much, but you heard the there opening is, track. That's the album. That's like every fucking song is like that. There isn't much to talk about. And then on top of that, you heard that song. You've heard this man's quotes. Do you think... Oh, the lyrics. Or, or the quotes you just read. Right, 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 right. What do you think this guy is making music that we can fucking talk about at it's length? Not really dissectable. Um, because so anybody who's listened to the show before knows how 
we go pretty deep with with whatever we're hearing. But I particularly get obsessed with little sounds mm-hmm. and things in the mix. That's why I'm such when a big, interesting. Yeah, it's such why I'm such a big fan of of Paramore's self titled album because the mixing is incredible. It's done by the guy from Failure. Also, there you, there you go. You you need to like drop these like pop references in so they can be like oh they just still like that type of music Look, but that's a great go. the Paramore album is fucking fantastic there and it's go. mixed like a fucking monster there are so many little amazing sounds that come in and out mm-hmm. uh, weird fuzzy ass distortions like heavy crazy fuzz bass and stuff like in pop music which is incredible yeah nothing <laughs> nothing like that like there's nothing interesting about the way it's produced the way it's arranged the way it's written it's it's glossy shiny Generic by the numbers dog shit. I can't take it. There it is. Ah, I tried, man. I fucking tried. But we got one more. And this next one's a little different. <laughs> it's a little different. Oh, shit. Before. What's going on? Oh, you, you got unplugged? Yes. Oh, shit. Uh, so before we move on to the next one, there's one brief quote about this this first album from, from Coming. Uh, he says... This is, oh my God. I mean, all you know, his quotes are all the same, but this is what he's talking about around this time period. He says, quote, when I started, I was at a very different place in my life. It was that mid period. The city was half the way I remembered, remembered it and half this thing that was changing radically. Still, my peers were all around. We were making our way in the world. So maybe it felt like we were participating in the changes. Way to say nothing while saying a bunch of words. Oh, you mean the passage of time? (laughs) Jesus Christ. Sometimes we grow older with time. And things change, man. (laughs) It did suck. All right. Uh, Actually, there's one more quote about... The song Rich. The song Rich Girls, but it's like... I mean... and this is the funnest part of the episode is just quoting quote, this guy. Yeah. <laughs> this is like his quote about the song Rich Girls. Growing up in the city gives you a unique opportunity to rub shoulders with people from radically different backgrounds. You've got to make your own way and money's never come between any friends of mine. The song is about people from different backgrounds sharing the same perspective. That's a fucking lie. He's he's never talked to anyone lighter than Mike's skin color, I'm going to guess. Uh, probably not. I, uh, <laughs> I, t- I tan well, but I'm pretty fair skinned. Yeah. Uh, and also, even I was being generous, I could have said my skin tone. Yours, was, yours yeah. is a little bit up there. Yours yeah, is yeah. pretty pale. Yeah. Uh, just in the winter, I get I get around that. <laughs> uh, it's those Mexican genetics, dude. I got fucking good tan genetics. There you go. Uh, but we got one more album five years later. Pretty big, uh, pretty big jump. And this is where they go to Cult Records, which is, like we said earlier, owned by Julian Casablancas. And... Well, I guess this we might as well just jump into this is 2013 Strike Gently. <laughs> Let me crank it one. Okay. I was like, this one might maybe 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 be better. I thought maybe too. It's not. I think the album is better, but only for very specific reasons. Hold on. And here, everybody, he's doing it right now as he's singing, but he gets worse later on. He's now Tom Petty, everybody. Hey, Tom, it's yeah. Tom Petty reincarnated. Yeah, Tom Petty, Lou, Lou Reed. Also, I guess the, this new band, slightly better musicians. They notice it. They're fine. They're yeah. all fine. They're all good. I was pretty welcomed by this song because it sounds nothing like the funky dog shit. Of mm-hmm. And I just, I prefer dad rock to that shit sure. as a bias. The, the problem is there's one mode. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. All right. We get the fucker. Now he's uh, emulating Tom Petty in every song. Some of them are worse than others. Uh, that song was like a, a decent representation. Some of the ones, oh man, what are the ones that get really fucking bad? Like figure on the ice, I think is one of the, Oh yeah. That First one, of all, that song is fucking awful. That one. Yeah. made me think more like a solo Lou Reed album. Right. Flash, flashbacks, memories and dreams is another really bad, bad rip off of Petty's vocals. Oh yeah. Yeah. I reluctantly gave that best, like my favorite song on the album. Really? They, I mean, not by much. Um, 
Uh, Wheel of Fortune is like... Yeah, that's the opener. Fu- no, the... Oh, oh, shit. Is it not? The primary... Oh, yeah, you're right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, Wheel of Fortune, Wheel of Fortune like... Yeah. Man, that's like blatant, like, Springsteen. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. It's specifically the Springsteen song, I'm on Fire. Well, but. there it is. Get a full-on citation. Uh, so this was produced by Gus Oberg, uh, who's no surprise there. Uh, produced the Strokes, Natalie and uh, Bruglia and Hell Turbo yeah. Negro. Uh, all stuff that we're big fans of, obviously. Um, being sarcastic. I saw Turbo Negro once. I felt like they played the same song for 30 minutes straight. Who, who's to say they didn't? Uh, <laughs> I've never heard of them. I can't judge. They might have. Uh, They're a, like a, a Bam Margera band. Like They got a little popular because... Like, because yeah. of his brother? Because Bam was just like, dude, you got to listen to Turbo Negro. Yeah. And, blah, blah, blah. and then he proceeded to ruin his career and his life. Uh, sorry. <laughs> uh, this is, it was mastered by Ryan Smith, who did Britney Spears, Elton John, Creed, Talking Heads, Lamb of God, and Nirvana. So, I mean, that's pretty what Im- do- yeah. impressive, <laughs> eclectic kind of. Hell like, yeah, Ryan Smith. <laughs> generic name, wonderful discography. Wonderful. Uh, so there's a lot of sax on here. And apparently it's done by Arno Heck. Or Hetch, um, who's done Tom Waits. Apparently, according to Tom, he's played on fucking Rain Dogs. Um, he's, James Brown, Cameo, The Rolling Stones, Billy Joel. Uh, and apparently, he's uh, he's like he's a, he played a big important part in Rollins Band. So yeah. when we cover Rollins Band, I think I figured they were to see it again. He probably is just like a New York City like session musician. Probably. I'm but, assuming. Yeah, most likely. But still really good. Yeah, hell yeah. Um, so let's just talk i'm so like happy that tom got the exact he just had the same response that we're having right now from these quotes yeah <laughs> so this is uh they asked coming about the, the long break between albums and this is his quote i guess it took me a while to lose and regain my sanity again that's it i yeah you mean the stealing with life and tom says fucking poets yeah <laughs> like, yeah 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 this is not exactly oh boy so uh on the approach for the new album because this one obviously is very different he says it was different for this one we just took the songs that we were writing pretty much all through the recording and we played them live in a really small room so you're ch- so you're, you mean hold on you mean to tell me that to record this album you took the songs that you wrote and you play them live and you hit record Whoa. Wild, dude. Wild. Whoa. Whoa. Oh, my God. Mind blown. Fuck this guy. <laughs> no, man. I hope he sees this. He's not real. There's no way he's a real person. I don't want anybody in this band to see this. It's not. It's not it doesn't matter. It, it doesn't matter. I Sometimes I'm like, there's real people on the other end of this, and I'm a, a little conscious, but... I have no desire to to hurt feelings, regardless of how I feel about the person. I have no interest in that. Uh, I, I don't. I, I'd rather just not have the association. <laughs> I'd rather him not know who we are. I feel happier in that space. I'm just saying, it. if if he coming my way, oh Lord God, I'm ready right. for it. I hate you just as much as him now yeah, for that fucking yeah. pun. So, what else about this album is is offensive? I'll tell you one. The length of every song is now oh, upwards of five minutes. Oh, they're way too long. They're way too long. Every song goes on at least twice as long as it should. At least the last album, they were pretty succinct. But I did enjoy two things. And I don't... I say that with a fucking tiniest of grains of salt. Or hugest of grains of salt. I don't know how that fruit, that fucking idiom works. Uh, Travel Express, for me, is, I would say, offensively predictable. Like it, most of these songs, you you know I, exactly where every everything is going the, the second it starts. Yeah, but that one is like, don't do it, don't do it. We all know where it's going. Don't I really, do it. I really hate that. Song. And then they do it, and it sucks. Yeah. But I think it has some nice moments in uh, in between, uh, kind of spaced out in between them. Uh, I'll acknowledge what it does well, but that main riff is dog shit. It's still completely derivative of other stuff. That's a lot better. And not to mention that it is one of the most egregious and petty, petty copycat vocals in the whole on the whole album i think that might be the worst one yeah, for the vocals right there um and the other one that i don't mind as much is the beggar which is too long too hey too long yeah. but uh I, it's like it's darker it's more dynamic it's still predictable and it's still mediocre by every standard except for the one set by this shitty album <laughs> 
good. Yeah. I, I knew we were going to go hard. I didn't know we were going to go this hard. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't I didn't think we were going to go this hard. I just kind of felt like, oh, you're doing this shitty dad rock. Uh, I wrote, uh, it sounds like an oxymoron if you don't like the genre, but it's like shitty yacht rock. Yeah, a little bit. Yeah. And uh, that one, I was just like, oh, now you're now you're dipping into the police a little bit. Dude, you want to hear shitty Yacht Rock? What good is Moonlight is shitty Yacht Rock? So bad. I mean, that's fucking real 80s Kenny Loggins shit, except without an ounce of catchiness. Dude, Kenny Loggins fucking write a mean hook. Has. Has, has. and has. Uh, and also, th- uh, yeah. also, Kenny Loggins. Uh, I don't know if he was raised, but I believe he was born in Alhambra or is from oh, really? Alhambra. So. Oh, that's a stone store from us. Holy shit. Yeah. Super random. Don't Crazy. know when we're going to talk about Kenny Loggins again. So. That's a good... I mean, I'm, I'm happy to know that fact. Yeah. Uh, the last quarter or so of this album, like the last four or five songs, every song is like five minutes. Yeah. And it, it really, it really drags out that, that final chunk. And... The last two tracks, I think, are, are some of the most offensive about that. Because Amelia is both. No, wait, fuck it. Both of them. Both, <laughs> both Amelia and Blue Rose Tattoo. Ton of Southern rock, like mm-hmm. sk- like Skinner style Southern rock, mm-hmm. but with nothing that makes those bands charming. Yeah, I, I'm not a, I'm not a, not a Skinner fan, but like I appreciate what they do, and I, there's a couple of songs that like, you got to give it up for. You can un- yeah, you can understand the yes. appeal. And I know where the merit is. This is just I I heard some Skinnerd and I'm gonna try some Skinnerd. This is like Ooh. it's like a, it's literally a model trying to play Skinner. That's <laughs> yeah. what this fucking is. Yeah. <laughs> this band sounds exactly how I thought it would sound. Dude, something about models. Like I've met models that are very cool people, for sure. Like great people. I've met this kind of model. Yes. And, and this is like uh this is years ago. It was at an open mic where I would I'd be mingling with like brand new comics as well as musicians. And you get some real fucking characters, some real weirdos too, some real, some really talented people, some really not mm-hmm. so talented people. One of these guys was a model who came to LA to model, failed immediately and tried comedy. He was so, I mean, first of all, not a fucking all funny. The cli- all the cliches. Not a funny bone in his fucking body. Sure. Great looking dude. Sure. I can see why he came out here to be a model. Not funny, even a little bit obnoxious. And uh, so I, I, I made friends with this this girl. She was a comic. Pretty pretty uh, like like early on, and she's funny. She's very smart. She's brutal and kind of to the point. And this guy is up there and he's bombing. And. He, uh, I, 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 he goes off. He has a horrible set. She goes up. She's doing all right. He fucking heckles. He says something like, like, like kind of like, like backhanded, trying to be funny. Well, and she just fucking tore into him for like the next, like, you know, two good. minutes. And it good. was one of the most satisfying, hilarious things. Cause like, yeah, you can't just jump into a thing you don't know anything about and expect to be good at it because people treated you well because you were good looking. Yes. Like it's not the same thing. Like it's a, also, also, I don't know if this is a hot take, but I feel like coming out to the big city and modeling blows up, you bet you better be ready to do that porn because that's Ooh. that's your number two. That's your number two. Yellow you you see Midnight Cowboy? Mm, yeah. <laughs> it's not it's not comedy, it's not acting, it's not being in a fucking band. Sound that ass. Well, unless you get very lucky like Cumming did here. Yes. And, and meet uh Well, he was kind of a successful he was model. A, yeah. Yeah, very successful. Uh sure is a great looking guy. Anyway, <laughs> uh this cool. album blows. I, I did li- I do like it better than the last one, but just for the simple fact that I prefer Petty Springsteen Dad Rock oh. over the fucking funky white stroke stuff of the early two thousands any day. Um just a preference, but they're both, you know, if you uh, both all forgettable products of the- also, we should say these motherfuckers were like no shortage of press and money behind them. They were all on every late night show. They fucking, you know, had a few songs go down as like best song of the year. It, not like number one, but yeah. you know, it's so like, ah, uh, <laughs> fucking shit that's frustrating you know it's, it's it's bands like this and stories like this that like that actually make me appreciate everything else because without let's just say 
injustices, <laughs> like the success of this band. <laughs> you you can appreciate the 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 Charles Bradleys. It, it makes you love the Charles Bradleys. Yes, because if there was no sorts of comparison of like, look at these fucking guy like Silver Spoon in his mouth, Days Born, Silver Platter, all that bullshit. Mm -hmm. Without those, the fucking the real success stories, the ones who worked at it, the fucking Mastodons, man, the fucking mm. the Charles Bradleys, like though, yeah, like so you don't to to plan you, anything in your life is a stupid and hilariously foolish endeavor. You just move, and whatever comes in your way, that's now your way. Whatever stands in your way is now the way. And sometimes it's real easy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> sometimes it ain't. It doesn't fucking matter. It matters what you make. Sometimes you need all the manure for the most beautiful black rose to to sprout. And only for him to die very quickly after his success. <laughs> Look, he was in his mid sixties. I knew I, everyone should have known it. It's why I went to see him. Yes three times because i'm like this guy is not long for this world anymore <laughs> please everyone watch the charles bradley episode is one of our least performing episodes in our in the entire history of this podcast better, better musician more interesting you could just read about that guy's backstory yep. and never fucking listen to his music and it's fucking amazing and if you even like the hint slightest hint of soul you'll love his music he's fucking awesome yes it's fucking awesome Hell All yeah. right, let's go listen to fucking Charles Bradley and yeah. comes the power a little bit. <laughs> Hell yeah. Anyway, uh, so uh, after this, uh, coming went solo. Uh, according to, to, to Wiki, his first major performance was at 2014 Bonnaroo, uh, which is, uh, all right, very cool, very cool. It says later, he was later featured in Richard Hell's um, Night Out with Richard Hell series, which was held at uh, New York City Symphony Space and was a two hour conversation between hell and coming that touched upon music. Art there's and film. No, sorry, I mean, sorry to cut you off. Go ahead. There's no way. There's no way that lasted two hours. And if it did, I'm going to say it's 95% Richard hell. Gotta be. I mean, the, the man is a, is a wild man. He's a wild man. I like his voice. I like yeah. his speaking voice. I like his speaking voice yeah. quite a bit. It's very slurry. Very Cut, slurry. I don't think Lispy. coming has like two hours of words in him, let alone conversation. Sure shit didn't have two hours of music in this entire discography. That's for no. sure. Uh, <laughs> fuck, man. We're just, uh, he releases yeah, his, his debut solo album, which is called uh, Out Calls Only uh, in 2015. Um, yeah, and they, they, they got some good press, like you mentioned earlier. Um, mm -hmm. But... I mean, who, who fucking cares? He's open for, for Brandon Flowers of the Killers. Which, I mean, all rubbing elbows with people that you'd expect them to rub elbows with. Yep. Uh, and all bands I don't really like, but I appreciate them a lot, a lot more. Now. I can say the Killers write good pop music, at least. Yeah, it's not for me, but I get it. Yeah, there's always... There's, just because we don't like something doesn't mean we don't appreciate where it is in, in space and time. Also, there's, this this, <laughs> there's just something about a band being native to Las Vegas... That is just rubs me the wrong way for some. Oh, you don't like desert people? I've I've never heard of, but oh, you mean no, like, like the, just people the, from the desert? No, no, not really. But uh, <laughs> you hear that? Alex is racist. Uh, that doesn't make any sense at all. But uh, I can't think of very many bands in general from Vegas. Yeah, it's really only the Killers. Like, huh. yeah, because I, I mean, my go-to is is hardcore punk because that's yeah. where. I, but I can't think of a single Vegas hardcore punk band. Huh. There's already too much entertainment out there. You can't really like. How are the locals supposed to compete with that? Uh, well, yeah, I mean, I'm I sure guess. there's you, scenes you, and all that, but you get people from all kinds of random places, man. I guess in terms of like you know popularity and generating like a buzz for yourself, it's what I'm. What yeah, I'm there's a, there's also not a lot of. At least I can't think of very many now of like L.A. native bands. Um, we're this old. We're just old, yeah, for we're sure. Old. And of course, all my references come from the '80s and hardcore punk, and there was a lot of Valley Native bands, but that's a different, different scene entirely. The only one I can think of is uh, Melted Bodies, who I like briefly talked about, but never. Oh yeah, the, the 2020 album, right? Yeah, they're mm -hmm. fucking weird. Shout Wild band. Shout out to Melted Bodies. Wild band. I don't know how you guys happened in LA, but shout out to you. Yeah, that's an interesting one. Uh, I mean, you really don't have any fucking idea because you get the, the this is one of the of the extreme you get i mean he's not from la but the, the 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 one end of what you expect to come out of a major city mm -hmm. that's known for its music and art whatever the bullshit uh you like oh yeah this guy 
didn't try. He was like, he's fully ingrained in the, 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 the image of it and the fucking culture behind it. And then you get people who also from the same city who do the crazy. I mean, I'm pretty sure swans are from New York, right? Yeah. And like, yeah, a little different, a little different. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I think, I think, well, I'm, and it's, We've, we've been saying pretty much the whole episode, you got to have a shitty life. <laughs> you got you to have to suffer. Uh, I mean, that's, that's a very generalized and, and a blanketed thing that's not accurate entirely. But there's, some, there's a lot of stuff in there where you don't know what's, what you need to fix until it's called out very yeah. harshly. Like, to be put on the spot and, and feel like you are a failure will make you better. It, I mean, it's just... It's an unfortunate side effect of becoming a better musician, person, artist, fucking entrepreneur, anything. You have to be p- told you fucking suck. You ha- it has to happen. This, uh, so the virgins, you fucking suck. I'm big yeah. <laughs> here's, your, here's your slice of humble pie. Fucking <laughs> eat it up. And even though one of them passed away, and I'm uh, sorry. I'm but. sorry about that, man. <laughs> you get yeah, you. Yeah, the, the rest of you. Yeah, the uh, rest of you. You fucking eat your humble pie. You like it. <laughs> thank you, everybody, for hanging out with us. Thank you, Roster, for requesting this uh, this wonderful, wonderful episode. I'm sure you didn't enjoy it that much, but we did what we can. We fucking listened to these albums multiple times. <laughs> Uh, yeah, and everyone else, if you want to hang out with us and you liked our shit talking, if you want to hear more, and, and honestly, we don't even go this hard almost ever. We rarely, rarely go this hard. When was the last time we went this hard? It was fucking Pokemon Tree? Like, that's how yeah. long it's been since we've yeah. gone this hard. Because uh, odds are, you know, on that Silly Dan episode, I liked it. The thing is, I, they're, went, they're, I went hard on Silly Dan, but yeah. even then, like, I'm not going to deny that these guys are fucking incredible at that thing, that weird fucking thing that I hate. <laughs> yeah. God damn <laughs> so yeah uh, drop a like if you like it subscribe if you want to hang out for longer leave comments talk shit to us appease the almighty all consuming all knowing all evil algorithm and uh help us get seen by others if you feel so inclined to do so you can find a spotify playlist link on the virgins in the description you got plays associated with basically every episode you can find all those at every and if you want to request artists for us just like Arasio, patreon.com slash every ever you get bonus episodes early access to the loose ends episodes discounts off our merch 20 percent off all our merch uh, you get to see our schedule in advance you can also get to vote on polls to decide who we cover next and if you're tier two if you're bigger than jesus you get to actually request artists like this uh i've been getting a lot of like emails and stuff i mean i mean I mean, that's the only way. Patreon is the only way we'll do requests. Like, closed, everything is, all requests are closed except for Patreon from this point on. Uh, and it's been that way for, for a while now. So I don't think people listen to these plugs. <laughs> uh, they just fucking email. But I appreciate the emails regardless. Uh, and uh, yeah, follow me on all social media at Panda Monkey. You follow Alex on Instagram. At Mother Puncher. Please check out my debut EP, Panda Monkey, uh, which you can find a link to in the description as well. It is not quite sounding like this it's not very poppy it's very post-rocky and heavy and it's got many layers and instruments and i find it to be uh something i like enjoyed more and i'm proud of it check it out if you feel so inclined to do so there as well uh check out our i keep saying check out and i I, i'm saying too many of the same words i've been talking to Uh, that's because you've been reading quotes by a simpleton oh my god my simpleton brain has gotten even simpler Please check out and follow our history guy, Tom Osman, on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter at Tom Osman Sounds, as well as his Substack, Tom Osman.substack.com. Oh, wait, or is it Substack.tom? Nope, Tom Osman.substack.com. Uh, and his debut album as well. So much for all on day's work, which you can find a link to in the description, as well as everything else, everything else, everything else. Okay, now. This is the hardest part of the episode. I disagree. It's easy. Easy? I found a solution. You found a solution. I'm going to pull the first album up because those songs are short. Yes. And I'm going to hit shuffle. And that's the solution to the problem. <laughs> Hold on. <laughs> so this is... The, okay. We have covered... This is episode 144. I'm sorry, 145. Yes. We've we've done 145 bands. We've always picked a song. We've we've had <laughs> many that we hated. Yes. We always yeah. found at least one song that we liked. Just one nugget. This is the first episode in the first band where we don't have a single song that we like. This is to show you how samey these songs are. I'm also there's there's uh the EP versions on here. I don't care. I bet they're the same. I can hit shuffle, and it's going to be the same. We're going to hit shuffle. And And thank you so much for listening and watching. See ya.